My name is Audrey Wright, and I am Associate Concert Master of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Today I bring you the second edition of an excerpt a day in which we will explore the scherzo from Schumann's Symphony No. 2. I will play the excerpt first, and then we'll go through it in more detail. <laughs> Schumann II, one of the most difficult excerpts for violin, for sure. Um, so let's get right into it. I like to think of three specific areas of focus when I'm working on this piece. The first is articulation and how we approach the bow stroke um, to get a, a beautiful, clear, um, clear bow stroke uh, off the string, um, something that sparkles, something that's um, strong without being too aggressive. Second area of focus, of course, is intonation. It's very, very tricky in this excerpt. There are so many diminished arpeggios and um, weird chromaticism. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on how I work on some of the especially um, gnarly areas uh, regarding intonation in this excerpt. Third area of focus is phrasing. Now, we get so caught up in the technical difficulty of this piece that um, often violinists just completely forget to phrase. And I am totally um, uh, included in this group. It's, I've played it, I can't tell you how many times I've played it for people and my colleagues or my friends will just say, you know, sounds clear and, and great, but um, I'm not getting anything musically out of it. So that's something to really keep in mind um, and, and work on in addition to all the technical things. All right, so starting off from the beginning, uh, I mentioned articulation and bow stroke. So we're going for a spiccato off the string stroke. Um, I do start from the string, otherwise, there's really no chance of, of having any kind of clarity. Um, it's an off the string stroke, but it's close to the string. And, um, and you want to find this kind of, I call it kind of like a, a sticky spiccato. So if I'm coming from the string, I'll just play on an open A. the bow with my right hand and fingers. I'm leaving my right arm essentially out of the mix. It's totally um, relaxed while I play this stroke. Uh, my hand just act activates the bow just enough so that the bow stick and the, and the bow hair actually really do most of the work for you. So keep the hand nice and loose while I, while I play this um, and uh, nice and flexible and the bow really kind of just bounces on its own in that way, keeping it nice and close to the string. So, um, so if you see kind of you, you um, starting from the string can really help you get that, that click, that bite that you need um, uh, in terms of clarity for this sound and for this bow stroke. Now, one way that I really like to work on this excerpt is um, by playing it with just open strings. So you kind of have to do a little bit of detective work to figure out what open strings you should be playing without the left hand. Um, 
But once you do that, it really helps to kind of coordinate your bow stroke with all these different string crossings um, so that you can add the left hand later without um, kind of uh, over exerting yourself to start with. So, so it'll sound something like this. So do you see how I've figured out what strings, what open strings I would be playing if I was playing um, the piece as written? And that way I'm able to just um, train my bow arm to, um, to, 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 to play this music without worrying about the left hand. So then once I've kind of got my, my, my bow hand trained, um, then I can add back in the left hand and it should feel a lot easier that way. So that my bow hand is actually really kind of leading um, the left hand and the left hand's kind of just along for the ride. At least psychologically, that's kind of a nice way to think about playing this music. Um, in that process, I'm also thinking about phrasing, right? So we want to think about what is going on in the tutti um, at the beginning here. And essentially, it's kind of a, a rhythmic um, uh, uh, backdrop to all of these 16th notes the violins have. So the rest of the orchestra is going yum, bum, 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 yum, bum, bum, bum much more beautiful, much more beautiful than I'm, than I'm singing it. Um, so if we have that in mind, we're really thinking that the emphasis is on where the accent is written on that first bar, da 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 and then we kind of back off in the second bar. That was a little bit exaggerated, but you get the point, so that there's um, emphasis and release. Emphasis and release and to make that kind of clear um, phrasing all the way through. And as we go on, emphasis and release. And even throughout a crescendo, we can still phrase with the shape of the notes as they rise and fall um, so that nothing ever sounds completely mechanical or robotic, okay? Um, so... <laughs> sense of kind of, um, uh, of, of shape and um, rising and falling. Now I should mention that um, in terms of tempo, the music is marked um, quarter note equals 144. And to be honest, when you're playing this alone as an excerpt, especially um, you know, on a stage alone by yourself, 144 is a little bit too fast for this to come across um, uh, as well as it as it as it can. Uh, I stick to around 138 to the chord note, um, which gives me a little bit of um, space to play with absolute clarity. And in fact, when we're playing um, something that sounds incredibly clear, it's going to sound faster than if we were just kind of uh, you know, getting through at 144 and things might have might be um, less clear, a little bit washier at that tempo. So keep that in mind that 144 is um, a good goal tempo to be able to play, but in context, maybe a slightly too fast um, in an audition setting. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the second ending. And um, these little um, interjections here, starting at the second ending, these are very tricky regarding intonation. Those diminished arpeggios are really difficult to play in tune. So I suggest, you know, throughout your entire process of preparing this piece, you should be um, going back and forth between playing it um, at um, performance tempo and playing it really slowly on the string so that you can hear um, the intonation. It's just like, 
you know, brushing your teeth, you know, it's like a daily exercise to, to really clean it up um, and, and make sure that your intonation is very healthy. So, Especially difficult for me because I've got these short pinkies um, and uh, it's a real reach for me to get that F natural in tune while playing the um, uh, coming D natural and C flat kind of low enough in relation to that F. So. That D and C flat really have to be on the lower side of what you what you may um, think, and the F may be a little bit on the higher side. That might also just be my tendency, so keep that in, in mind. But playing that passage, and when it comes back at the end, very slowly, just practicing it. Um, again, it's about hearing it. It's about getting your left hand to really feel um, uh, how it feels to play that in tune. Just keep playing it slowly throughout your preparation of this excerpt. Now going on, um, these little accents in the odd tempo um, with the repeated F sharps, they should really be done, I think, with vibrato more than anything else. Maybe a little bit more energy in the bow, but not too much. to the A string for the third one. Some people go up all the way on the D string for this, but I find it's um, it's clear clearer for me to go over to the A string. So uh, first position and it kind of um, completes that crescendo for me. This is the um, forte section. It's also measure 35. This section, I, al I always like to kind of mentally check in and remind myself to relax and make sure that I've got both feet firmly planted on the ground and that my knees are nice and soft and that they um, are, are almost bouncy in a way. So I really can feel totally connected to the earth and grounded. Um, therefore kind of releasing any tension that might be happening in my upper body because this is a really really tricky passage that lasts like three lines um, so it's kind of unrelenting and be led again um, you'll hear me talk a lot about sound right so while this is fast and and noty um, sound is really important here so it, we can't sound crunchy um, it has to be open and here's another place where practicing this under tempo is great so that you can focus on playing the same bow stroke that you would at tempo, but focus on how your sound is. So my bow stroke is still sticky. Um, that sticky spiccato at this tempo, um, but it has resonance, it has core, it's round, um, and it's, um, it's in no way uh, kind of getting um, uh, crunchy or, and it doesn't feel tense at this tempo. So then once I kind of figure out my sound, I can try to be led by that when I go back to the regular tempo. <laughs> Okay, um, now this is another place to remember to phrase because this will help with your sense of timing and you don't want to rush here because it is so technically difficult. So um, really phrase that. one of course. 
chorus the third time and to really kind of let your violin do the work for you. Don't force the sound. Don't go for a crescendo just to make your point that you're phrasing it. Kind of just open up and the range of the notes that's been written in the music will take care of it for you. forte phrase and started the subito piano, I took a little bit of time to set up the subito piano and that is absolutely all right, especially if you're playing this excerpt, um, it, you know, in context for an audition, chances are you'll be in a space with at least a little bit of resonance. So it will really only come across as um, good phrasing. It won't come across as like, oh, this person added a rest. It will just feel natural. So don't bulldoze into that um, pianissimo timing wise. Give yourself enough space to set it up um, and really get the sound, again, get the sound and the dynamic that you want. Um, To, um, to play piano and, and uh, lighter than you were playing earlier, um, focus on the sound and um, not rush and all of that good stuff. Okay, so I think this covers most of my main points for Schumann's Scherzo. Um, again, happy practicing and I look forward to seeing you for the next edition of An Excerpt a Day.